Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Welcome to the 2012 UNC Asheville Athletics Hall of Fame ceremony. We are so glad to have a great crowd here tonight, and we look forward to a great evening. Tonight we honor one former great Bulldog student athlete and one former great Bulldog coach, who are definitely champions of athletics and leaders in life. During dinner, you'll also hear from, from our current student athletes who will speak about what it means to be a Bulldog. At this time, I'd like to introduce Al Whiteside, Jr., president of the Bulldog Athletic Association. Al will speak briefly. Welcome, everybody, to tonight's banquet. Alfred? Good evening, and welcome. And to a lot of you, welcome home. You know, this is one event that I look forward to every year. And even though I'm not a bulldog, well, I am now. I've been ad adopted, you know. I'm, <laughs> I'm a bulldog and an eagle. So I, you know, from North Carolina Central on the other part of the state. But what I would like to say is, as always, it's great to, for this event when I look out and see the faces, a lot of familiar faces. Uh, it reminds me it's that time of year again, homecoming here at good old UNCA. And we hope that all of you are enjoying this weekend. And with the new Sherrill Center, please, you, I know you will, it's a lot different from those of you who came up in the Justice Center. A lot different. Enjoy it and enjoy the weekend and enjoy the festivities. And unfortunately, I missed the game last night because I had a meeting I couldn't get out of. But I will see all of you tomorrow as you uh, move around the campus. But again, on behalf of the Bulldog Association, welcome. And we've got quite a few. How many of our members are here? Why don't you stand? Let's give them a hand. Great. Now remember those faces, and if you need anything, contact me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Al. And now it's my uh, honor to bring up our uh, Director of Athletics, Ms. Janet Cohn. I want to welcome you also. I'm actually going to pull out my notes because this is an important evening, and I want to make sure that I thank everyone who is here. And I want to start tonight by saying I have a special guest. And the reason I have a special guest is because what Al just said, the Sherrill Center is a little different than the Justice Center. And as we've been ha hosting all these basketball games with Carolina and concerts and all these events, I'm the person that keeps saying there's no traffic problem. There's no parking problems. We can handle this, can't we, Eric? I'd like to introduce my special guest and please thank Chief Eric Boyd who has done a great job. Not only has he and his staff helped us with parking and traffic, but one of the things about being in the Sherrill Center is making sure that everyone is safe. And he has done a magnificent job making sure that we have a great security plan. And so we are so glad that he is here. This is his first year and the first year of the Sherrill Center. So thanks again for all you've been doing to help us. Um, I also want to start out tonight by um, introducing, before I go through a few things, I want to make sure that we have a chance for Kevin Frazier, our Director of Alumni Affairs, to come up and give, he's been very busy today, and he has been very entertaining, but I want to make sure that all of you who are alumni get a special greeting from Kevin. Thanks, Janet. To start off with, I'd like to ask all the alumni present to please stand. We are thrilled to welcome you home. You know, UNC Asheville has been the Bulldogs since we first fielded teams in the 1930s, then back as Buncombe County Junior College. We are proud to be Bulldogs because our Bulldogs not only have a heartbeat, I'll tell you they've got a, a brain beat as well. You know, there are a lot of schools that will 
sort of pass over the student part of student athlete. But at UNC Asheville, we are able to elevate that because we only bring the smart ones in. And we are thrilled to continue this tradition at UNC Asheville. There are now more than 17,000 graduates of UNC Asheville and its predecessor colleges. You might be surprised to know that 1,700 of them are student athletes. So 10% of our student body have participated in student athletics over the years. I'd love to give each of them a hand. The Hall of Fame tonight finds us right in the middle of homecoming 2012. Activities have been going on throughout the week and we kicked off with our annual parade and pep rally just a couple of hours ago. And I wanted to invite everyone, all of our alumni, our BAA members, and all of the friends of UNC Asheville to come and participate in the homecoming activities. We'll have the tailgate tomorrow starting at 11 o'clock and of course the game. During the halftime of the game, we want to invite everybody back to the Mountain View Room in the Sherrill Center. That's the one in the back corner near the scholarship deck for some uh, beverages and some food and mainly some fellowships celebrating our Bulldogs. Also, um, we want to invite all of our alums and their guests and friends tomorrow evening to Oliver Twist downtown. We'll have a little event from 8 to 10. But tonight, I particularly want to invite all the folks at the Hall of Fame to come to the Hall of Fame after party. Up at Avenue M, uh, just off Merriman Avenue, you head out Edgewood to Merriman, take the left, and it's up at the top of the hill. Uh, we know that folks often get together after the... Um, Hall of Fame, and we want you to come join all of our alums. We've got alums gathering there right now that'll be there from 7 until well after 10 o'clock. So please take that time to come up. I want to close just with um, uh, several years ago, I was going through the old yearbooks, and the 1961 annual is particularly important because it's the last year up at Seeley's Castle before we move to this campus. And the last page has a moving truck coming down off of Town Mountain Road that reads quite simply, we leave with a tinge of regret, but with expectations of great things to come. And when we walk through that Sherrill Center, and when we see our basketball teams, and we see our student athletes and the great work they're doing, when we gather with 17,000 alumni, weren't they right? Great things to come, and even better things to come tomorrow. On behalf of our 17,000 alums, thank you for your support of our student athletes, your support of the Bulldogs, and your support of UNC Asheville. Thanks. Kevin, thank, thank you so much. Um, I want to start out with thanking someone that's really been wonderful to me throughout my eight years here. And that without, you know, some people question, you know, our, how much we value athletics. Some people say, you know, how important is athletics to a university? And I can tell you, athletics is important to the university as the person who's over the university. And I want to really thank Dr. Ann Ponder. You have been a wonderful leader for us, and you have really, what you've seen happen in this because of your leadership. So thank you so much. I also want to thank tonight, especially Mr. Mike Gore, because this is Mike's baby. When you say, Hall, today I just said Hall of Fame, and Mike said, what? I mean, this is his event, and he has been really the leading force in organizing this through the year. So, Mike, thank you so much. Also, this year, Donna Peak, Nancy Williams, Aaron Punter Spence, Scott Walker, Pat Bryan, um, Chartwells, the great food we're going to have, Shirley Snyder's helped us. And also, I want to give a particular thank you once again, Tom and Nancy Honeycutt, because Tom always makes sure we have some wine for these events. So thank you, Tom. <laughs> Tonight, I also one more time would like for, if you are a member of the Hall of Fame or representing someone in your family who's a member of the Hall of Fame, would you please stand up? Let's recognize all our Hall of Fame members.
We've met Al earlier, who's president of the Bulldog Athletic Association. And I would like to ask once again, all of our Bulldog Athletic Association board members, please stand and remain standing, our Bulldog Athletic Association board members. <laughs> our board of trustees members, I know we have our board of trustees. Would you please stand up? If you are a member of the board of trustees, would you please stand up? I want to recognize you. Any foundation board members who are here, would you stand up? Foundation board members, I know we have some of you here. Any members of our parents council or our UNC Asheville alumni council, please stand up. We could not do our great work without these board members. We don't pay them, but they sure act like we pay them a million dollars. Thank you so much for your work. There's another special board that many of you are members of, and I'm a member of it too, and I want to recognize someone here tonight because we are having some exciting things happening in Asheville, and part of what's happening in Asheville is a group of individuals, uh, Wilma Cheryl, Lou Bissett, K. Ray Billy, Jan Davis, I can go on and on, Carolyn Bruce Peterson, formed the Asheville Buncombe Regional Sports Commission. I know Ben Van Camp's here tonight. Would that group stand up? Because that's why we're going to have all this basketball next week. Thank you so much. We also, I just mentioned Carol and Jan, I know you're here representing our city and our county and we really appreciate you. All the senior staff members that are part of the Chancellor's first team, would you please stand up? I know I've seen Dr. Bill Haggard and some others here. Thank you, Dr. Haggard. John Pierce. Our faculty members, I know Dr. Yearout's here, he's dressed up, I've noticed his tennis shoes though. Faculty members, please stand up. Faculty and staff that represent the university. I've already recognized Mike Gore, who's one of my associate athletic directors. My other associate athletic director and our semen, senior woman administrator, Terry Burney. Would you please stand? Thank you. Athletic department, what I call the team behind the team. Would you please stand up? Those are the ones that are making all the great things happen at the Sherrill Center, the baseball field. Please stand up. Thank you. Perfect timing. I've been dragging this out long enough because now I want to recognize our coaches. who. All of our head coaches and assistant coaches, would you please stand up? <laughs> Thank you. I, I do want to mention something else. As you, you might notice that we are missing some of our coaches. This is homecoming. But even though it's homecoming and we're celebrating our men's basketball team and this great run that we're, we've got going on, we have all of our teams competing this weekend. Our men's indoor and outdoor track are actually out of town competing in the Big South Championships this weekend, so we're missing that whole group. Our men's and women's tennis have like four matches this weekend. They were competing today over at the Crown Plaza, so we're, I was over there today watching tennis. Baseball has a doubleheader tomorrow and a doubleheader on Sunday. So some of our coaches are not here because they're actually with our student athletes competing. So please, um, let's recognize and realize that we have so many student athletes and coaches that are really doing good things and representing our university. So thank you so much to our coaches. I want to also take a brief moment because we've mentioned the Cheryl Center. Miss Wilma M. Cheryl and her wonderful husband, Jerry Cheryl, would you please stand up? Thank you so much. You know, we have so many friends, and, and this is really what makes UNC Asheville 
wonderful. And I want to thank you again for being here. And hopefully, you know how important that each and every one of you are to us. And I want to turn this back over to Mr. Mike Gore so we can keep, keep the program going. At this time, I'd like to um, please turn your attention to the back of your program for Alma Mater, which is going to be sung by Jacqueline Lowe. And Damian Lopez on the guitar. So please, back of your program, please stand up and join Jacqueline and Daniel with the singing of our Alma Mater. And now for our invocation, please welcome Dr. Bill Haggard. Thank you, Mike. Let us pray. Giver of all things, as we gather on this grand night, understanding that we come from different places, hold different values, and cherish different beliefs, we are drawn together by an outstanding university and athletic program and we are grateful. In a world where many do not have the opportunity to study or compete, we are thankful for the opportunities our student athletes have had in the past and continue to have today, and for the achievements and honors that we will celebrate tonight. We are grateful for those we, we recognize tonight, for their commitment, their hard work, their talents, and their character. In a world where some experience no community, we're also grateful for those coaches, teachers, mentors, and family members who nurtured those we will celebrate tonight. In a world where many do not have access to food or safe shelter this evening, we are grateful for the opportunity to come together in this great venue to share this wonderful meal. We pray that we will use this nourishment to strengthen us to do good things, that our friendships will be strengthened, our lives will be, will be broadened, and that our gratitude on this great night may grow into peace for all of us. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Bill. We hope that now that you enjoy your dinner, but also listening to our student athletes speaking about what it means to be a Bulldog. And I'd, I'd like to ask our student athletes to please come up and tell us about what it means to be a UNC Asheville Bulldog. Hey guys, um, I just want to give a little tidbit. I was brainstorming while everyone was talking. Um, and what it means to be a Bulldog to me, I'm Devin Cavanaugh, by the way, I play women's tennis. Um, a Bulldog is tenacious, proud, determined, and loyal. Um, it may not be the most high profile breed, but it is character, personality, and strength of being a, bull um, a Bulldog is not the most high profile breed. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Very good, Devin. Okay. Hi, I'm Amy Clower, and I'm also a women's tennis player. And um, my story is a little unique. Um, I'm a local. I'm from Hendersonville. And um, 
you know, growing up, I always told my parents that I was never, ever going to end up in this area. And, uh, <laughs> you know, they'd always say, well, why don't you just go to UNC Asheville and live at home? And I was like, no way. Um, and so my older sister, um, she went and played tennis at UNC Greensboro. And then after two years, she transferred right back here to UNC Asheville. And I thought she was crazy. And, um, and then last year, I went to Appalachian State. And I ended up right back here. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's funny that this is homecoming because this really is home. And uh, um, I'm so blessed to be here. And I just thank all of you for um, giving me the opportunity to play here. It's, it's truly awesome. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, hello. Good evening. <laughs> Um, so, uh, my name is Quentin Reynolds. I'm a freshman on the men's soccer team, and you know, I didn't know I'd be speaking first off, so. <laughs> but anyway, so what it means to be Bulldog, I mean, I've played soccer my entire life, and I've been a part of a bunch of different teams, and you know, I've made the switch from, literally from, I've been for one team for one month, and another team like the next week, and it's just never, like it's, it was really hard to stick with you know, being fully dedicated to one team. And then when I came here, it was just like, this is the perfect fit for me. I mean, it's the best decision I've ever made in my life to be Bulldogs, so I love it. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm a freshman on uh, the track and cross country team. Uh, to me, being a Bulldog is about being a student athlete uh, as well as putting myself out there on the track. Uh, yeah, and doing my best. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name's Ferris. Um, I'm a junior and I'm from Kansas City and I'm on the women's soccer team. Um, for me, being in Asheville is kind of like I get the best of both worlds because it's so different from Kansas City. So I've been telling my mom for so long that, my mom and my dad, that I just wanted to get out and go really far away. So I decided like my sophomore year of high school that I was just going to, I was like, sorry, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be really far away. I don't know where I'm going. So um, I didn't know where I wanted to look. I knew I wanted to go south, but I ended up um, on a recruiting trip actually um, up north in Michigan, and I hated it. So I was like, oh, I'm just gonna stick with staying in the south. So um, I visited Mississippi State, because I have a family history there. And I was like, yeah, that's where I wanna go. It's gonna be like home, like, it's gonna be awesome. And I visited, and I hated it. It was like, it just wasn't, it just felt really superficial. I didn't feel like I could see myself there. So then I had received a letter previously um, before I even visited Mississippi State from the soccer coaches here. And I just kind of set it aside. I was like, I don't really know. I've never heard of, like, I mean, I've heard of it, but I never even considered it. And then um, my dad was like, you should really look into it. Like, it, I looked online and it's beautiful. It's an awesome city. So I came to visit and I fell in love. And I was like, this is where I can see myself. And not only do we, we're at an awesome school, but we get, we get to experience so much with the city itself. And it's just awesome to feel like I have the best of both worlds coming here. It's hard to get me to leave. Like, I don't really go home. My mom gets really excited, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll be home a lot later. But <laughs> so, yeah, being here is awesome. Um, all, the, like, all the coaches, they're all so nice, and we all support each other all the time. Um, I see Coach B all the time. He checks me off the roster for team breakfast in the morning. <laughs> but it's like a family here, and I couldn't have ended up in a better place. So that's just my little story. But I'm, all, I'm so glad all y'all could be here tonight. So it's good to see everyone. Hi guys, <laughs> my name is Bobby Castro. I'm a sophomore in men's soccer team. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. And I have a couple different things to say, but I actually lucked out on the opportunity to come here to UNC Asheville. 
as a junior in high school, I got recruited by Matt Kerr, my head coach, and I looked through the school, I didn't know anything about it. I really didn't know Asheville existed. So I looked into the school from, I was just kind of secluded to Raleigh. So I looked into the school, I came for a visit, and I just really enjoyed it. And so if it wasn't for soccer, I wouldn't get the opportunity to get a great education and to be a student in the classroom and go and play in competitions. So I was really thankful for the opportunity to come here. It means to be a bulldog, along with what Devin said, being tenacious. You need to be responsible, respect your peers, and just respect everybody in property in general. So that's it. Hello, my name's Elizabeth Kyle. I'm a junior on the women's soccer team. I'm also a local girl. I've been here a lot of my life. And a lot of my family works at UNCA, so I've been around the campus for a lot of my life. <laughs> and when I was looking at schools, I did the same thing. I looked at a lot of different schools. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I didn't want to be in Asheville. So <laughs> I looked all around, and eventually I realized that the reason why people don't know that Asheville exists is because it's a well-kept secret. So I looked around, I ended up back at home, and I couldn't be any happier. And I know the reason why I want to be a Bulldog is because it's about being with my community and being with people that care about whether I win my game or whether I pass my test. So for me, that's what's important. Hi, my name is Erin. Um, I'm on the cheer and dance team. And I was born and raised in Chapel Hill. And I grew up a big Tar Heel. Um, but when it came time for me to move on, I decided I wanted to, you know, expand my opportunities and I came out here and I just fell in love with the area. And um, one of the most important things to me was that my team became my family since they were so far away. And I can go to any one of those girls for anything. And pretty much a, a lot of the athletes I could go to for a majority of things. So um, I'm now proud to say that I will always be a bulldog and um, hopefully they'll win tomorrow. <laughs> um, I'm Amanda Larson. I am a freshman on the track and field team. Um, I'm from Fairview Park, Ohio, and how I found out about Asheville was my brother goes here also and coming to visit him, seeing the campus, it was beautiful, and it was small like my high school, so I definitely wanted somewhere where community was important and the teachers were there for you, which I definitely feel like I can go to any of the teachers, staff, anyone, and get help with anything. And I'm definitely proud to say that I'm a bulldog, and yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm the DJ Cunningham, men's basketball. Um, I don't know if you all noticed, but uh, Coach B tricked me to come here. I wanted to go play football. But uh, I got here and it was kind of a rude awakening. But no, I myself, like Bobby, didn't have a clue who Asheville even was when my coach told me that I was being recruited by them. Um, but I came down on my official visit and I automatically fell in love. Uh, before I even left, I committed to play here. Um, I knew right off that this team and this university was something I wanted to be a part of, and it's been one of the best decisions I've ever made. So, thank you. Hi, um, I'm Brian Conley. I'm a sophomore pitcher on the uh, baseball team here. And uh, I wanted to tell a little story about, it's a little, we're a little different at UNCA. And, uh, Going back to last season, um, opening up conference, we had Coastal Carolina. And as you guys know with Coastal Carolina, 36-game um, winning streak in the Big South. And uh, it's a little, little daunting when they come into your place as a freshman into your home field. Well, we played them on Friday, and um, they had a, a top 10 round draft pick that threw really well, and we ended up losing. And then we got a torrential downpour. and. We tarped the field the night before, and it was we weren't sure if we were going to get to play or not. Um, and Coastal Carolina has a grounds crew that takes care of all their field. 
and uh, I got a text message about seven o'clock in the morning that said, pull the tarp, boys, we're gonna go work on the field. <laughs> and uh, that ownership, and uh, we worked and worked and worked. I think we worked till about 11, and uh, we were able to start the game. It was a little bit late, and Coastal was not happy about playing because their grounds crew has their thing looking great, but we have our ownership in our field and are really proud of it. And it uh, turns out that day on a uh, walk-off hit, we snapped Coastal's 36-game winning streak. <laughs> And we're able to come back on Sunday and beat them again. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully next year that it'll be happen again this year. But um, that's that's my bulldog moment. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Looks like I'm last. Um, my name is Amanda Daler. I am a freshman on the women's soccer team. I'm from Castaic, California. <laughs> Pretty far. And like everybody else pretty much. Um, I didn't know about Asheville. Uh, my dad would like pressure me about like looking at colleges and I was just like, I'm so young, I don't want to do this yet. Um, but when the time came, I was looking and uh, I was talking to my coach, uh, Michelle Demko, and she had been emailing me back and forth. And I came out on my visit and fell in love. And I'm so happy that I'm here. We would go out on our games and see the other schools, and me and my roommates would just look at the other schools and say to ourselves, like, I can't see myself anywhere else. And I'm just pleased to be here, so thank you. Can I have your attention, please? Can I have your attention, please? If you're eating, please keep on, please keep on eating. And at this time, we are about to begin the 2012 UNC Asheville Athletics Hall of Fame ceremony. And at this time, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce our chancellor here at UNC Asheville, Dr. Ann Ponder. Thank you, Mike. And thank all of our student athletes for those inspiring and wonderful words. Uh, please help me thank our students one more time. Tonight we welcome into our Hall of Fame two athletes whose virtuosity and leadership in sports were thrilling to watch and whose accomplishments in the arena of higher education have continued to inspire and delight us. Our student athletes know well that fewer, few, very few of them enter into professional life as professional athletes. But here at UNC Asheville, we are very proud of the fact that we are preparing our students by developing their critical thinking skills that they'll need to thrive in whatever career path they choose. The skills they learn in the classroom, enhanced by the leadership lessons they learn in athletics, especially from their coaches, help develop savvy global citizens that we are really proud to call our graduates. Teamwork is a key to a winning strategy in life as well as in sports. 
We have witnessed many examples of this this season in our volleyball, soccer, and men's and women's basketball teams that the strategy of passing the ball to the person with the better shot can be the difference between a win or a loss. The whole is, as they say, better than the sum of the parts. Tonight's inductees can attest to the value of creating a great team working together to reach their goals. Their successes are truly inspirational. Some qualities exhibited by great leaders are, a great leader has the ability to envision a goal and set a strategy for reaching it. If the goal is high enough, there are bound to be challenges and obstacles along the way. The leader has the discipline to keep at it, and that's despite some setbacks. The leader must develop the emotional resilience to see the opportunity in the challenge and forge ahead. Again, a supportive team working together and solving problems creatively is crucial to accomplishing a goal. A coach, a leader, must have the ability to communicate that goal, the direction and the strategy clearly and comprehensively and often very quickly. Most importantly, the leader must do more than envision a dream and more than develop a strategy. Many game plans and strategic plans are just pieces of paper. The ability to act and to motivate others to act, to work hard, and to inspire others, inspire others to do their best, that's the most essential part of success. From our superb students to our terrific faculty and staff and administrators, and to the parents, families, and friends who support all of us to make UNC Asheville a stellar university, we have in this room tonight a great Bulldog team here at UNC Asheville. Before I move on to the rest of our program, I would like to call forward Athletic Director Janet Cohn to assist with presentations. While I do that, I would like to ask this group, who are part of the Bulldog family, to help me recognize what it is that Janet Cohn brings to UNC Asheville. When we think at UNC Asheville about national scope and leadership, we think of her work with NCAA, we think of her leadership in terms of recertification, we think of the stature she has in terms of the committee work, we think of the stature she has as a peer and leader in her field. When we think about the Director of Athletics and her work with University Enterprises, think about who she is in Asheville, the chair of the Asheville Buncombe Sports Commission. Uh, the person who put the architecture to the memorandum of understanding with the city of Asheville, and the person who continues to superintend our primary relationship with our great hospital, Mission Health. And then when we think about what she does here at UNC Asheville on our senior staff, when our athletic director works with our coaches and with the student athletes who she knows, we know that we are seeing a really great leader. Sometimes leaders come in for the kind of criticism that is so unfair that they get to show extra strength and resolve and calm while they continue to do the right thing. We've seen that often and recently with our athletic director, and I want you to thank her and recognize her for her excellent work. Our first inductee this evening is Lisa Rhodes. Will you come forward, please? She enjoyed a tremendous coaching career with our volleyball program. And here to say a few words about Lisa is back at the podium, our Associate Athletics Director, Mike Gore. Please come forward, Mike.
Thank you, Chancellor. This is, this is indeed a great moment for me as I think about the uh, summer of, or the spring of 1989 when UNCH was looking for a volleyball coach. And our volleyball program uh, the previous season was upset because they couldn't play intramural volleyball. That they couldn't play in, 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 uh, they weren't, uh, they didn't want to be in the Big South tournament. They wanted to play in the intramural volleyball. And, I, and we knew we needed to change. And, um, and I knew it was important for us to hire a good volleyball coach. And, and, and Lisa had done an outstanding job at Eddieville High School, and we knew she was the perfect person for the job. And at that time at UNC Asheville, that was our early days of Division I. We weren't sure at the time how we could win, could we win championships, and this woman showed that it could. Now, the chancellor will tell you all about, all about the stats and stuff, but, but she showed uh, that UNC Asheville could win and win big. And it's a great deal of pleasure. I introduce Lisa Rhodes. Now you have to stay here while I say some wonderful things about you, okay? And then you get to say a few words if you want, okay. Uh, all right, she coached UNC Asheville Volleyball from 1989 to 1993. She led the Bulldogs to three Big South regular season championships and two tournament titles. She led the Bulldogs to the first ever postseason tournament in the Division I era when they were selected to the National Invitational Volleyball Tournament in Dayton, Ohio in 1991. The UNC Asheville Volleyball Program was also the first Big South program to go to a postseason tournament. In <laughs> In 1992, she led the Bulldogs to a 32 and six overall record as UNC Asheville was the first team in the Big South history to complete a season unbeaten in league play and in the tournament. It would take another Big South team 12 years to accomplish what our Bulldogs did in 1992. During this remarkable era, Asheville was 22 and one in Big South regular season league matches and 29 and two counting tournament matches. That, as they say in Western North Carolina, is right good. <laughs> Lisa left UNC Asheville in 2004 to become the head volleyball coach at the University of Tennessee Chattanooga. She recently retired after leading the Chattanooga program to 280 wins, three Southern Conference championships, and 10 winning seasons. Lisa and her husband Jim reside in Hickson, Tennessee with their children Trent and Courtney. Please join me in welcoming to the UNC Asheville Hall of Fame, Lisa Rhodes. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Chancellor Ponder. Thank you, Director of Athletics, Janet Cohn, for this wonderful honor. Wow. When Mike called me and told me about this induction, I cried. And then I smiled. I was very surprised and excited to think that my five years here at UNCA are being recognized as something special. Made me happy. The time I coached here were some of the greatest times of my life. As a young coach from Polk Central and Edneyville High, I had no idea what was involved in coaching Division I. I knew nothing about scholarships, recruiting, budgets, or NCAA rules to name a few. The one thing I did know how to do was to motivate and instill confidence in young women. And reflecting over those years, to think the thing that separated us from other Big South teams was our love and passion for the game. We loved hard work, practicing hard, and most of all, competition. When we stepped on the court and the whistle blew, we believed we could beat anyone. 
and we did a lot. <laughs> the girls loved playing, and I loved coaching them. Between us, we had the confidence to win it all. We believed in each other, so this honor would not be possible without the great student athletes I had playing for me. In 22 years of Division I coaching, I've never had a group of players like Alona, Gina, Danielle, Elisa, Amber, Jennifer, and Kim. They were special. After a hard two and a half hour practice, they would want to continue to train. They would ask, can I have 10 more balls? And as I would say, you can only have 10 more balls as I was turning off the gym lights because I did not want them overtraining. But I've never had that since, ever had girls that wanted to stay after a hard practice and get better and better. Now they've stayed if they've been asked by the coaches, but these girls did it just because they loved to play. I was blessed. When looking back, the thing I think I'm most proud of is that we accomplished so much with so little. At the time, I had two in-state scholarships to split among nine players. We took one van to away games in which I drove. Right, Amber? <laughs> we, had, we had meals from the cafeteria that we stopped to pick up on our way out of town in the van. We stayed four to a room, and we even stayed at a Motel 6 once. I had no assistant coach until the last year, and that was part-time. And I was coaching two sports at the time and teaching nine hours a semester. I looked back and I said, how did I do that? <laughs> um, I worked for three athletic directors in five years. And even though we lacked stuff, material items, we didn't care. Our focus was on what we did have, the passion to win and each other. We were a close-knit team who believed we could accomplish anything. So when I look back at my first Division I match in 1989 against Western Carolina, who was much more talented, much more athletic, and we were down two sets to none, we believed. And we came back and won. So I won my very first Division I match here at Asheville. And in 1990, when we were picked to finish sixth in the Big South, well, we finished first. We believed. And in 1991, we were 25 and nine in the Big South, and Big South champions with a nine and zero conference record, and beat Davidson on our home court to win the uh, Big South championship tournament. Wow, that was fun. A lot of fun. And then, of course, there was 1992, when we were 32-6, and six, undefeated in conference play, and beat Liberty in five sets. And I had Alona, one of my players, who was already inducted in the Hall of Fame in the first class here, took over the match in the fifth set. Um, and to think that she played for $500 a semester here. We believed. What a fun year. In closing, all I can say is what a ride. How lucky was I to have the wonderful women I had play for me. I'm so thankful for the support I had from the administration, the athletic department, my family and friends, and especially from Mike Gore. My family and friends have always been supportive of my coaching career. I know it hasn't always been easy on them, but I love you and I thank you. And my mother, who passed away in 2010, from who I got my passion of sports and love for competition. Thanks, Mom. But for those who know me best, know that I have never been one for awards or recognition of myself. I repeat, this honor would not have been possible had I not had the greatest student athletes playing for me and the wonderful support system I had. So I leave you with this quote, all things excellent are as difficult as they are rare. This describes my time here at UNCA, both excellent and rare.
Congratulations, Lisa. Our next inductee enjoyed an excellent men's basketball career. Here to tell us a few words about Tony uh, is his teammate, who is a member of the UNC Asheville Hall of Fame. Uh, please welcome to the podium uh, Bamford Jones. Thank you. I was up here one time before and I didn't have any notes, so I came a little more prepared. And I did hear what you say short. So. <laughs> um, it's a privilege and honor to be here tonight to introduce my teammate, Tony Bumpus, into the uh, 2012 University of North Carolina Athletic Hall of Fame. I must admit, it's even more exciting than three years ago when I was, had the honor to be inducted. Uh, to be here to do this with Tony. And I think part of that's because when you have a teammate recognized, it's really a part of everybody on that team. And we've got another teammate here tonight in George Gilbert, so it's good that he's here. Um, <clears throat> it's great to see so many people here uh, tonight, including Tony's family and friends. Um, I did talk with Coach Green, Jerry Green. He couldn't be here, but he did want to send his congratulations to Tony. Jerry was an assistant coach our last two years at Asheville. Um, I'd like to thank the, uh, we talked about teamwork being a theme. Um, I'd like to thank the uh, current university team, including the best chancellor in the university system, Ann Ponder, the hardest working athletic director, Janet Cohn, Mike Gore, the man for all seasons, <laughs> all the supporters of the university who are so important, Thank you so much for the Kimmel Arena. Um, and all of those people behind the scenes who do so much of the work, thank you. Um, I'd like to recognize Coach Eddie Biedenbach, uh, his staff, current Bulldogs who are having another great season. The seniors on his team have had such great careers and are continuing to have great careers. Um, <clears throat> the Bulldogs have a pretty unique situation having a starting backcourt uh, J.P. Prim, Matt Dickey, who have started for four years. I think that's amazing. It's great to see their camaraderie, their leadership, the way they uh, work together. It's just fantastic. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, I'm here to introduce Tony. <clears throat> Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The green and white of Guy B. Phillips Junior High School eighth and ninth grade basketball teams. <clears throat> the black and gold of CHHS, Chapel Hill High School. The blue and white of the University of North Carolina, Asheville. <clears throat> Seems like yesterday, um, we were talking about this earlier, riding in Tony's car, that black cutlass, <laughs> down to Winston-Salem to play Wake Forest right before the Christmas break. Tony and I have been teammates for nine years. <clears throat> I feel very fortunate to have had that opportunity. As a teammate of Tony's, you knew what to expect. You could always depend on him. You always knew he had your back. As a freshman, Tony was fast, quick, and could jump. And then he started lifting weights and added some power to his game. Tony was a consistent scorer and rebounder, but most of all, Tony was a team player. <clears throat> he was a determined competitor, yet humble. Tony was willing to sacrifice for the team to allow others to have the spotlight. I still have flashbacks of Tony getting the rebound, turning, throwing the outlet pass to me, and then we're off to the dance. He did a lot of that. <clears throat> Speaking of flashbacks, the current ball, uh, Bulldog team had an opportunity earlier this year to go to the Bahamas. They played in a tournament down there, and that was great. But few of you may know, maybe the older ones, <clears throat> that that was not the first time that the Bulldogs have been to the Bahamas. Back in 1975, our freshman year, we had an opportunity to go to Nassau and we played the uh, Bahamas national team. 
It was a great experience. And I remember Tony and another teammate, Randy Palace, getting into a dunking contest, and I thought they were going to rip the rims down. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <clears throat> And I, I did bring a picture of that. I was hoping to show it tonight. We couldn't get it up, but I'm going to give it to Tony. And it's a picture of Coach Hartman, Tony, myself, in the Bahamas. And uh, even though it was 37 years ago, we look pretty much the same. And if you want some proof of that, see Tony. I've got it. His hair was, well, both our hairs were a little different. Uh, <clears throat> OK. I have a great deal of respect for Mr. Bumpfus. <clears throat> With all the challenges of college life, Tony was disciplined and applied himself to his areas of interest and got the most out of his time at the university. As a result, he's achieved much in his career at Duke University. And even though being from Chapel Hill, I still don't hold that against you. <laughs> uh, when Tony called me to uh, invite me to, to do this, I reflected on the many stories I could share, but I was curious about Tony now. In typical Tony fashion, he referred me to his current teammates, his coworkers. <clears throat> and they described him, and the words that they, that they repeatedly used were humility, integrity, a quiet gentleman, hard worker, if you want it done, call Tony. Work, home, church, sings in the choir. I had to throw that in. <clears throat> so much more to him than meets the eye. A unique sense of style gives credit to others. Gives credit to others. <clears throat> These words and description sound very familiar to his old teammates. This is my humble opportunity to get the rebound, throw the outlet pass to Tony so that he can have his deserving spotlight. I'm proud to introduce a true leader in life, my teammate, my co-captain, my friend, Tony Bumpfus. Bamford, come back and be in this picture. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Tony, you get to stand by me while I say a few things, okay? <laughs> right. Tony Bumpus was a member of the UNC Asheville basketball program from 1974 through 1978. He was a three-year starter for the Bulldog program. Tony is the 10th all-time career points with 1,429 and is the program's second all-time leading rebounder with 968 rebounds. His eight rebounds per game is the second highest in school history. Tony produced 606 field goals, the fourth most in school history. He also played in an in-school record 121 games for the Bulldogs. Tony currently lives in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. He's the Associate Director for Facility Planning, Housing, Dining, and Residence Life at Duke University. And so this is the moment that we get a chance to welcome Tony Bumpfus to the UNC Asheville Hall of Fame. Welcome to the podium, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Today is a day for many thank yous. First, I give thanks to God for allowing me to live to see this day. I have thought of this moment for a long time. This recognition could not have come at a better time in my life as I reminisce and reflect on the things that have made me who I am today. 
thank you to my family and friends for their personal sacrifices that have allowed them to travel here to give me support during this celebration. May I ask you to stand, please? It means so much to me that you are here. I am grateful to this great university for giving me the foundation to compete in the job market and work alongside some of the best and brightest at Duke University, where I have been employed for over 32 years. Thank you to Chancellor Ponder and the Bulldog Athletic Association Board for considering me for this achievement. I am honored to be among the great to be named among the great UNCA athletes, past and present. Thank you to my coaches, Cantwell, Green, and Hartman for instilling the principles and disciplines that, have, that I have been able to apply in life outside of basketball. Thank you to my teammates for helping me to develop a competitive spirit while also teaching me to appreciate the importance of teamwork and friendship. Thank you to Bam Jones for being a friend over the years. Bam and I, as he mentioned, were teammates in junior high school at Chapel Hill and also in, at Chapel Hill High School. In 1974, we came to UNC Asheville together we both endured those freshman trials of being considered standouts in high school and expecting the same prestige on the next level. <laughs> the, really, the reality was everyone else had been a standout at their high school and had come here with the same mindset. <laughs> Needless to say, there were some intense battles on the court. Through it all, we both learned that it would take hard work to, in, to earn those stripes. Bam and I were Bulldog co-captains during the 1976 and 1977 seasons. Bam was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2010, and, and now we are yet bonded as teammates once again in spirit and through our success. Thank you all for your support, and thank you for sharing this moment with me. Thank you, everyone. Uh, let's have one more round of applause for both of our inductees into this year's Hall of Fame. And now we'll bring Mike Gore back to the podium. Thank you, Chancellor Ponder. And at this time, please, uh, please welcome back to the microphone our athletics director, Janet Cohn. Um, I want to say, Lisa and Tony, congratulations. Um, quite an awesome thing. Um, Lisa, I know firsthand she knows how to coach. Um, most of you know I'm a former basketball coach. I claim that. The reason I don't claim that I was a volleyball coach because I had to go against Lisa, and she probably beat my team pretty badly several times, but this lady could coach. Um, each year I'm amazed more and more, particularly with our men's basketball players who we induct. And I know those of you that played for Coach Hartman and also for Coach Green, y'all have a special brotherhood that we hear every time that we induct one of these former players. It's very unique. I'm looking forward when Coach B's players are inducted and they are coming and I know we're going to have the same kind of sentiment. Also from other volleyball players, our women's basketball players, our soccer players, you have a special bond. And you know, we've been celebrating this for how many years now, Mike? How many? Nine years. 
And one of the things we've been celebrating, and we hand you a plaque, but we've never had an appropriate place to really honor you permanently at the university. That has changed with the Cheryl Center. And if you notice tonight, you didn't have dessert and no one offered you coffee. That was <laughs> planned. Even though we believe in health and wellness, it's not because we're trying to make you healthier but not having dessert. We're gonna have a special ceremony after this where we are going to unveil truly the first Hall of Fame display. And it is awesome in the Sherrill Center. And it's appropriately on what we call the scholarship deck. Because our student athletes have come a long way from getting $500 to play. And they've come a long way because of the people that are in this room who are giving scholarship dollars through our Bulldog Athletic Association, through our endowed scholarships. And as I look out here right now, if you have an endowed a scholarship that we presently have, or you have one that we are going to get sometime in the future, would you please stand up? Because we have a lot. I know Ann and Carleen, Wilma, Cheryl, y'all stand up. These are all folks that have endowed scholarships. Go Force. Those scholarship dollars are so valuable for us and to ha have a place like the Sherrill Center to finally display our Hall of Fame because that gives our student athletes, our coaches, and even people that contribute to our program something to aspire to, something they can see when they're walking around and trying to stay healthy in that concourse. So we are gonna do that tonight. There's one other thing we're gonna to display tonight too. It's called the Circle of Champions. You know, Wilma Sherrill, Wayne McDevitt, and some other of our legislators brought that 35 million, what, what do you call that, Wilma, down the hill, down, up the mountain, up the mountain? That 35 million was to build a North Carolina Center for Health and Wellness. But our campus leadership and our community had a bigger aspiration to expand the scope of that facility so that we might have a little bit of basketball, and that little bit of basketball has been pretty exciting this year, and a whole lot of graduations, concerts, health and wellness fairs, open house. I mean, we have had so many events in there this year. But to expand the scope of that, it took some private funding. And Wilma, who was kind of working here a little bit, she's still working here. I tell you, we're sometimes chance. I think Wilma's our boss because we just go after when she tells us to do something. Wilma said, let's do something different. We're going to have to raise some money, and we need to raise some money for the Kimmel Arena, expand the scope. We need to do some things for that track and tennis courts and soccer fields and baseball stadiums. Let's start something called the Circle of Champions. And I said, this is going to be wonderful. Let's start it. And she said, well, we don't have a place to display that yet. I said, well, someday we will. So we started in 2008 asking people to help our university with facilities. And we have raised well over $8 million, but we're not finished, folks. We are not finished. There's 38 people, organizations that have contributed and are now going to be displayed tonight as part of our circle of champions. To be a circle of champion, you must give at least, at least $5,000 solely towards facilities. You can give more than that. <laughs> we will definitely take more. I want to just read out to you some folks that have done this. And if you are here tonight representing, please stand up. BB&T Foundation, Blue Cross Blue Shield, North Carolina Foundation. Sissy, would you stand up? Because you helped with that one. Chris Brookhouse and Ann Ponder. Buncombe County. Carol, do you remember we came asking for some money for a track? And you, boy, you helped us, you and the commissioners. Buck and Joan Cash and Chartwells. Christine Curry, who was a great, she not only gave money to this, she's now deceased. She helped start the Eddie B. Endowed Scholarship. Eddie, why don't you stand and represent Christine. Cliffs Management, Joe Evelyn, John Ellis, Mike Grace, Junis and Pat Grimes, The Grove Apartments, Earl and Hart, John Hepler, Home Trust Bank. Mr. Ed, stand up and represent Home Trust Bank. Let's go. Tom and Nancy Honeycutt. 
Joe and Cynthia Kimmel, the Kimmel Foundation, Mission Health System and Foundation. I know Jonathan's here. I saw some stand up. Parsec Financial, Sherwood and Faye Pinkston, Pepsi Cola Bottling, Progress Energy, Hesse and Sharon Miller, Rusty Pulliam, Carl and Jan Ricker, Wilma M. Sherrill, J.C. Taylor, Volvo Construction Company. Char you remember I came to see you? I came to visit you, yeah. Uh, uh, Wells Fargo. Vol uh, Ty and Angela Wigginton, Roy and Wanda Williams, you know that Carolina school? Those folks. <laughs> Eugene Winter, the Zeises, 38 people have contributed well over $8 million. Let's give them thank you so much. <laughs> Our work is not finished. Our work is not finished. Because when you tomorrow and tonight when we go, go down, I really want you to come down to the Sherrill Center on the scholarship deck because we are actually, you will be the first group to actually see the Hall of Fame and the Circle of Champions. And I'll tell you what, if you're in the Hall of Fame to walk over there and touch your plaque and know that so many people are going to come in that Sherrill Center forever and see that, or to go and see that circle of champion and see your name or your organization and know that you are helping to make a difference that lasts forever. It's not going away. The university is always going to be here. We're not always going to be here. But this university is going to educate people. You heard earlier from our student athletes, and they're very thankful for what you're doing. Um, every once in a while, I like to kind of remind myself more than anything, and my coaches and staff humor me. I sometimes do it by having meetings. Sometimes I send them emails. Two weeks ago, I sent an email just to a random group of coaches and, and the team behind the teams, and I asked them a question. I said, remind me again, why are we in athletics? What's our purpose? What business are we really in? Who are our customers? And I want to share with you one answer. I love this one. It's, it's a great answer so that you know what you're trying to do. UNC Asheville Athletics is in the exact same business as the math department, the psychology department, the chemistry department, and any other educational department on this campus. We're another entity under the umbrella of the university. Like every other educational department, it's our business, our purpose to educate young people and help them become sound, responsible, and reliable citizens. I think we met a couple tonight. We really have an extremely selfish job as coaches and educators. If we fail at helping to develop these young adults, then we fail ourselves. Even though it's pretty scary to think that some of our student athletes will be future leaders in our country 10 years from now, <laughs> it's a reality. One of our student athletes will be lobbying for social security changes and perhaps health care changes in this state and co country 10 years from now. With all this in mind, our job is to nurture and to help young people become stronger and more self-reliant. So I have a different answer for the second question. Our consumers, our co customers are ourselves. We will reap and enjoy the fruits of our labor as we are producing future leaders who also want to be champions in athletics. That's awesome. See, the coaches, yeah. <laughs> our coaches, and our staff, and our faculty, and our leaders, our senior staff, our chancellor, we know what athletics is about. We're just like every other department on the campus. We just occasionally get to be the front porch because we get to hear about and see our wonderful men's basketball team on national TV, or hear that the women's soccer team went to the NCAAs, or the baseball team's gonna play that South Carolina in a couple weeks, but we're like every other department. We're educators. We are educators. And so when you invest in us, you're investing in someone's education. And that way we get to continue to see Lisa's and 
Tonys and Bamfords, and we can keep going down the list and list and list, will continually stand up here in front of us. And you help make that happen. And we never forget that at UNC Asheville. My, my coaches and staff, they humor me because I'm sure when I get them doing these little projects, they say, we got way too much to do than answer your questions. But this is important. This is important that we always remember that our goal is try to be champions in athletics. And one coach wrote this answer about being a champion. Yeah, we want to win. And we really love it when people are applauding us, but the loudest applause and the loudest championship is when that student athlete walks over to Chancellor Ponder and gets that diploma. What a championship. And what an opportunity when we are realizing every day, and I'm seeing this more and more. Kevin said earlier today, how many, we have like 17,000 alums, and how many are right here in Western North Carolina? They're doctors, they're politicians, they're teachers, they're health care providers. That's UNC Asheville. That's the leaders. So tonight, in order to earn your dessert and to get your coffee, you've got to walk down or drive down to the Sherrill Center, go in the front door right by the Wilma M. Cheryl Stone out front, go right in the door to the scholarship deck, you have to see the Hall of Fame and you have to see the Circle of Champions. There's about 60 spots left on that Circle of Champion wall. And somebody, somebody, 60 of them, are going to help fill that wall up so that we can build, finish that track we can do that soccer stadium, we can do that baseball stadium, and we can continue to provide athletic scholarships so that we get to keep doing this every year, forever. So thank you so much. Mike Gore, once again, you're solid as a rock, pal. He'll be in this Hall of Fame someday, I guarantee it. Would you please, um, some of the staff, coaches, and um, team behind team, would you help us escort our friends down to the Sherrill Center? And we are going to unveil the real first ever Hall of Fame. So thank you so much. each of these athletes. I'll tell you what, I get a little choked up about that. And I, uh, as Barbara will say to a lot of people, I'm, I'm not real emotional, but, uh, but I think I am. And, uh, and, uh, you know, so, but I, 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 mean, I mean it uh, from the bottom of my heart. I want you to really deep in your hearts know that you are special to this university. This university can't do this without you. Thank you again for being here. Really appreciate it.